I have here a HP Stream 11. This was released with Windows 10 S with only 2 GB of storage and an Intel Celeron processor. And today's world it's kinda useless to be fair. I mean even clicking on Windows Start it will take probably about 2 seconds to put up the start and stuff like that. So nothing you can do with it. But today we're going to make it a server and a desktop using Debian. So let me show you how this works because this is pretty amazing. We're going to start by installing Debian 12 on this device. Now, installing Debian 12 is pretty, you know, pretty easy. You know, it's just a normal installation. The thing that I will recommend: make sure that the root user and the normal user have the same password and the same username. Like this, it will be much easier to make a sudo after in case we get an error. But normally, you just follow the instruction and you just install Debian. Okay, so how you can see, we're literally on the first boot, so we're going to press enter, we're going to put a password, I only put one as a password, so you can put whatever password you want, and now we're just waiting for the first boot in Debian, which this is it. Now, the first thing that you will want to do is just open here and just type terminal, and you want to go to terminal, and here is where we're going to do the updates and the upgrades that we will need, and because I'm moving too fast, the computer is still loading the setup, so this is just next, 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 skip, done. Here it is. So this is our terminal, right? So here all you have to do is just type sudo apt update, and I'll put your password. And how you can see, you get this error. HP is not a sudo file, so we need to fix this. So how are we going to fix it? Easy, just type su, and then put your password. That's why I said the root password and the normal password, make sure it's identical so you, you don't confuse them. But in case they're not, this is the root password. So the HP has the user password and this is the root password you need to type su. And now we're going to type sudo apt install jedit. And this is very easy so you can fix it. It's more like a Word file, so it's not going to be too complicated for unexperienced users. Now that it's done, we type sudo jedit slash etc slash sudo airs and we type enter. And here how you can see we have a file. Now we're going to use user privilege here. How you can see it's root, but here we don't have our username. So we're going to put hp, we put space until here and simply all you have to do is just copy this line, paste it here and click save. Once this one is safe, you just close it and now we can test it. So we can close terminal and now let's try to type again. sudo apt update. Put the password and how you can see now it's working. So now we are sudo air and everything is working perfectly. Now everything is up to date. Now sudo apt upgrade, this should be the same. And how you can see nothing is installed. Now we just open Firefox. I would recommend trying to use a different browser for this uh, this computer if you're planning to use it as a laptop as well because Firefox is a little bit too much for it. But how you can see, it's still working perfectly. Now we type Casa OS, we go on Casa OS uh, website and here we will have a link which we can just copy. So it's this one, curl, thing like this, right? We copy that one, now we can close Casa OS and now we Simply right click and for some reason it didn't copy, paste and we press enter. And how you can see we get this error, curl is an unknown command. So we have to do sudo apt install curl. Once it's finishing, then we will be able to use the command. Now that it's finished, we paste the command again. And how you can see now it's installing Casa OS. So all we have to do now is just wait for it to install. And how you can see now Casa OS is installed. So we have a link here. This is our IP address that this computer have. So 192.168.0.7. This will be your way to access Casa OS from every computer. So if we just type it here in the browser, how you can see we're going here to Casa OS. Now hit go and you have to create a username and a password. This is all local. So put here and the password 
uh, whatever password you want. Click create. I will save it. And how you can see, we now are in Casa OS on this computer. So how you can see, 66% of our CPU is being used and 56% of our RAM is being used. Now, when you think about it, you know, that's not too good for a server, but it will still work, so believe me. So the first thing I, I wanna do, I'm going to install Jellyfin because in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use it as a media server. Now you can install different things, uh, different application if you want, how you can see here, it's just you open the app store, you click install and that's it. It's like installing an application on your Android or iOS device. And here you have to wait for it to install. Now, the best thing about it is that if you, you don't have to use this computer to access the server, you can use whatever computer you want from your house. And this is what I'm going to do. I will transfer right now after the installation to my Mac. It's much easier for me to record it like this and you won't have to see this quality of a video then and uh, you know, you can see the screen recording from the Mac. And uh, yeah, I'll wait for this to finish installing and then we're going to jump controlling it from our Mac. Okay, so now we're recording from our Mac using OBS, so we're going to open parallel desktops, a parallel desktop, I'm sorry, Safari, and we put the IP address. How you can see, we're having the uh, Casa OS setup, well, setup login. So we put the username and the password that we just put. I'm going to save the password, and how you can see, we have Jellyfin. Now here, we have two options. So you can see our storage is 27 gigabytes, the entire computer, which I still have it over here, so you can still access everything from, from the other computer. Uh, you only have 32 gigabytes of storage, but we're going to fix it. So you have two options on how to upload files. You either go to file here, you go to whatever you want, media, for example, movie, and you click upload and upload the file and simply just upload it. Or we can make it a share file. So what we're going to do is this one. So we're going to go on file, we're going to right click on it and click share. Once we click share, how we can see we have here for Mac or for Windows. And for Linux, it's literally the same like in Windows, so don't panic. Or if you're, if you're using Fedora, this is going to be the same one as in Mac. But if you're one in Windows, uh, Linux, I'm sorry, best just try both of them. So click got it. Here in Finder, go to connect to server and just paste this file. Click connect, connect and register as a guest. Connect. And that's it, how you can see now I have access to that folder. So I'm going to put some uh, music and some uh, movies on it. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. And how you can see now we're copying a movie and it's pretty fast, you know, the movie is not the best quality. So this is the thing with this computer, you can't go too high. Now this movie is in 1080p, 60 frames per second. And that's kind of the maximum you'll be able to go. You won't be able to stream in 4K, but it's still better than nothing. Especially if you have this one in the house or you're trying to make as much as you can from your devices. So yeah, we'll just copy the movie. So now that it's finished, let's go set up Jellyfin. So we are going to open the browser again. We're going to type our IP address. We're going to go to Jellyfin and we're going to set it up. So English, yes. You put the username, whatever username, uh, HP. You put a password, whatever password you want, and you click next. Now you click add library and you go to movies, for example. You click on this dot here and you go to media and movies and it will automatically take all the movies from there. And for the music, we're going to go to music, folder, media, music. And you do the same, you have TV shows and stuff like this. Now we're going to click next region I'm from United Kingdom, click next. Here, you just leave it like this, click next and finish. Now all you have to do is simply just log in with the username and password you just created. And how you can see, now we have both our movies and our music here. And we're just going to wait a little bit so Jellyfin can get all the cover from the movie. And how you can see now Jellyfin managed to do it and we have our song and our movie here. Now you can add multiple movies, you know, it's up to you. Now if you're wondering how powerful this computer it really is, it's actually pretty powerful. Even though it doesn't have, you know, a lot of resources, you can watch a movie while somebody else is streaming a YouTube video, for example, on the laptop or doing something else on the laptop. So you can watch the movie, you can listen to music, you don't have any problem. And to be fair, for the price you're paying it, it's pretty decent. Now. Just a heads up, I'm telling you right now, I saw on eBay 
a lot, a lot of people saying that, well, asking about 50, 60 British pounds, at least for, him, uh, for this laptop. Don't pay this one. Now, the reason why is this is because there's a confusion right now. Now, HP released the HP 11, again, really reset in 2021 with Windows 11. This one is with Windows 10. The difference is that one has 64 gigabytes of storage, run Windows 11, has four gigabytes of RAM, has the minimum for Windows 11, while this one doesn't. But there's a lot of confusion in between these two. And I don't know if people are taking advantage and they're raising the price on this ones, or maybe, you know, they don't know what they're selling. I have no idea what the problem is. The thing is that I paid 10 British pounds for this laptop and I already have a video long ago from, from this laptop, how much I pay for it and stuff like this. Don't buy this laptop in case it's overpriced. It doesn't worth it. For the 50 pounds that you're going to pay, you can buy like a Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi 4. 10 times better, 10 times more powerful. So don't buy it if it's just, you know, it doesn't worth the price. But if you have it in the house or you have a laptop in the house, doesn't matter if it's this one or more powerful one and stuff like that, then that would be perfect. Now, the difference is we have only 32 gigabytes of storage and we need to fix that one. So we're going to use actually a USB hard drive. Simply just plug it in and we're going to set it up and make it work perfectly. Now, after you plugged in your hard drive, how you can see, we actually have it here. It appears here. Now, all you have to do is just go into settings and here you can actually merge the storage. Now, if you merge it and you click on this one, how you can see, it won't let you first because whatever you have to do, you have to format it first. So make sure whatever you have on your hard drive is not going to be, you know, important. Otherwise you will completely lose it. But you, uh, you format it, you put a password, the password that, you know, you have on your uh, Cas OS uh, username and you just wait for it to format. Once the formation is complete, all you have to do is just merge storage, go here, click on it and click submit. Now Jellyfin is running, it will restart, Jellyfin is continue, so just click restart because I do have Jellyfin here running. And how you can see now I have one terabyte of storage, which is literally just this. So everything was merged into one drive. So the storage one terabyte from here with the 32 gigabytes, well, doesn't matter, but still you have all these things now. So you have a lot of space now, and now you can add all your things, all your, you know, music, whatever music you want, whatever movie you want, and you can install more application because now you have space. So you can install something like AdGuard, for example, to block the ads in your house, you know, next cloud, you can do whatever you want with it. You can save your picture with photo prism. You can do whatever you want. And this is why I think it's a good deal if you can buy it very cheap. So again, don't let people take advantage of you. But yeah, this is my review of the HP 11 stream made it as a server and use it as a desktop computer. You can still browse everything on it and use it as normal. The only thing is that when you want the server to run, well, the laptop has to stay on nonstop, but you can just disable the screen and it's simply just close it, the laptop and leave it plugged to charge. Now, if it's worth doing something like this, Kinda yes and no, depending if you have, if you have a spare computer, I would recommend doing that one as a, as a server, especially that if you have a desktop, you can plug the more hard drive and stuff like that. But if you don't, USB hard drive with this laptop or any laptop that you have in the house, it will be perfect for your day-to-day -day stream from music, stream of movies and saving your files and backing up all your pictures. Well, I think it's perfect, but yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're planning to do something like this or trying to do it on a different laptop. If you do have problem, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to help everybody. I, I managed to respond to every single comment that I receive until now on most of my videos. So I hope I will help you guys with this one. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. And I'll see you guys next one.